It's a comedy club that's killer, literally. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. Uh, Rebecca, we're comedians, right? Or at least we lie to we ourselves and say we ourselves. are. Uh, yeah. Well, Instagram does say comedian. Yeah, so they're, it's a pretty official. It's, uh, yeah. But you, in Los Angeles or the United States, you can't uh, talk about comedy and uh, clubs without mentioning the comedy store. Absolutely. In, in LA, in Hollywood, it's like yeah. the premier, like, hallowed hall yes. like it's coke dusted it's fabled it's dreams have lived and died there every single day mm-hmm. we perform there mm-hmm. you know um so anyone can perform there i guess yeah pretty so much low anyone. bar low bar now low bar yeah. yeah but it is uh i think it's a pl- i feel like it's a place you know i mean if you haven't seen it, the the outside seems like it's been done, but the inside looks like it's, it's yeah. frozen in time. It's in that area of Hollywood where there's a Viper Room right there. You're in like deep West Hollywood, Sunset Strip, yeah, rock and roll, exactly. Uh-huh. So much history in that area, but specifically the Comedy Store, which are rock, kind of rock stars in their own right. Yeah, um, and I, you know, I feel you know the pictures on the wall, and I feel like just. The the building itself has probably captured so many emotion highs mm-hmm. and lows. That's all there are. Yeah, it's all highs or lows. Whether you're there and having a really good time, or you're a comedian killing it, or you're a comedian and not killing it, or you're somebody's mm-hmm. having a bad time. And I'm sure there's been there's probably so many things that have happened there. Uh, if these walls could talk, I guess absolutely. But I'm wondering if it was kind of in a way set up for disaster because it wasn't always the comedy store. There's life before the comedy store, Rebecca. What? Yeah. Mm. No. Yeah. Mm. Uh Uh-huh. And there's life before the internet. Mm. (laughs) Now (laughs) you're just fucking. No, this is is definitely true. The building that the comedy store is in uh, was originally built in the 1930s by nightclub developer and owner William Wilkerson, the late 30s. Want to be a nice nightclub called Ciro's. C I R O. Posture. Yes. Cool name, right? Cool name. We're going to Ciro's tonight. That's right. And we'll take my girl Ciro's yeah, tonight. Yeah, put my machine gun elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Got my yeah. girl, got my fedora. We're going to swing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to. Uh, and then, um, you know, like uh, the, the, the what was it? The uh, Great Depression's pretty much over at this point. Yeah. Let's have a good time, right? Exactly. Yeah, you're you're kind of getting into, uh, you know, like wartime shit. People yeah. Are ex- people are amped. Yeah, people are excited. There's money again. Production. Hollywood, too. The golden era of Hollywood. Films are being made all over that area. And you need a, you need a club. You need yeah, a, a, you club need a to, place you have, to dance it out. Then, you know what I mean? Show your face. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Ciro's in Hollywood was that place. What eventually became the comedy store. And, uh, yeah, for 20 years, it, it was just like the place. Like you said, Hollywood, you want to be seen or you want to see somebody, you, you go there. Ho- like four Harvey Wallbangers, you sure. go home. And a highball glass. That's right. You're right. there with your mistress. You go out to your wife. Wife, yeah. Or you go with your wife sometimes and leave your mistress at home. I'm old-fashioned. I'm sorry. <laughs> I leave my mistress at home sometimes. Uh, now, what makes this very exciting and probably not surprising, uh, the mafia was involved. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. I mean, with a name like Ciro's, it's got. I mean, it, ha- like it, it absolutely you're gonna has get to the be. meatballs, and you're gonna um, you leave your. You don't leave your gun at home. You just no, bring it. You bring it with you. And uh, uh, Mickey Cohen ran a brothel right next to Ciro's. God, everything in the 30s and 40s just had a brothel attached to it. Yeah, it just was. I mean, if there was a, a Chipotle and mm-hmm. they were brothels were still cool, there'd be exactly. a brothel. Next you know the Habit Burger? <laughs> yeah. Is, it was a brothel. It was a brothel, yeah. <laughs> Everything was a brothel at one point. Um, so the, the mafia was involved. So obviously nefarious things would happen. In the basement, now this is convenient. I think it's convenient. There was an abortion clinic mm. right in the basement. The walls uh, could talk. Yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously the conversation of abortion unfortunately really hasn't uh, evolved as much as we'd like it to, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. You so, hear a lot of bits about abortion at the comedy store that are yeah. not doing this area justice. No, exactly. Mm-hmm. So um, there were obviously illegal abortions uh, down there. Uh, and One woman died, and uh, the nurse was publicly humiliated and probably killed 
uh, by the dead woman's boyfriend. So well, yeah, there was. Well, uh, it's like okay, like poor woman is just trying to help another woman's yeah. life not be baby ridden, right? Like they're not sanitary. No, no, in a basement of the fucking. Sure, they weren't mafia. taking into consideration. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, and then her boyfriend kills her. Great. Yeah. Like, so let's kind of fast forward. Uh, and I've actually heard about this story. Um, I forget where I heard it. Maybe on Mark Maron's WTF podcast, possibly. Mark Maron? Talk- yeah. Talking about. Oh, I guess yeah. He, yeah, he would know. He would know. Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, yeah, he would know. Um, uh, this, I think, about even abortion. Happened, he just, I think eh. this is before that. Uh, there, I guess it was, there was a, yeah, there was a, a strike, like there was like a stand up comedy strike I guess you know that thing is like you don't I mean listen we don't but and I don't know what the rules are but getting paid isn't the norm it's the opportunity to perform that's the norm so I guess maybe there was a strike around that and then one comedian uh and this is in the 70s this is in the 70s okay. yeah Steve uh Lu- Lubetkin I hope this is one of his biggest mm-hmm. Steve Lubetkin Lubakin um who's a friend of uh Mitzi Shores who owns Mm-hmm. Owned the, uh, the comedy store, Paul yeah. Shore's uh, mother. Seen, I'm dying up here. Yeah, she's an AP, and the portrayal of her is as, as her being executive producer. It's already like a really awful portrayal of her. Yeah, yeah, she died though. Yeah, she's uh, it was supposed to be pretty intense, but um, he uh, he was I guess involved with the strike, and, and he wasn't allowed to perform uh, at the store after that, which obviously he was trying to make some kind of comeback, and he. Uh, the, you know the hotel next door, the big hotel. The, it's the Andaz now, which I was actually okay. just at recently. That's I, I believe where um, they got the where Led Zeppelin. Was it the Ramada? Was it like a chain? No, this it like was the Continental. It used to be the Continental. Okay, back in the day, you, you know when okay. uh, Almost Famous. Yes. When he's on the roof, mm-hmm. um, a, a Golden God. Mm-hmm. I think that was the hotel they were either used or was referencing. I gotcha. think they're referencing that, and it's next. It was. The Continental then, now it's the Andaz, and that has a ton of history, too. I was in there, and I was like, this is totally amazing. I just My friend was staying there, and I spent a lot of time. But he um, jumped off the roof of the Continental mm-hmm. trying to land on the, like, the roof or whatever, or whatever of the comedy store uh, and killed himself over this. Well, can you imagine someone doing that about the pack? <laughs> <laughs> or any place, you know what I mean? <laughs> or any place. Uh... <laughs> Specifically, the pack. <laughs> yeah, I, listen. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, but it's not worth it if you're thinking about it. It's not worth it. Um, and you want to know what the suicide note said? Yeah. My name. No, is, actually, don't tell me. Don't, you want to guess what it is? <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm gonna do charades about it. Uh, my name is Steve Lubetkin. I used to work at the comedy store, uh, and that's it. And, and I guess. Oh, in the note, he blamed Mitzi for not letting him perform there more. So oh, uh, blood in your hands. Yeah. That being said, like. Yeah, I mean, again, there's so much pressure being put on entertainers to succeed and do so well. Within that, there's people that have worked there that have seen like, apparitions, or yeah, there's been like people do that they have worked think it's there. Him or just like they don't know. I don't. I think they just think that it's it's just like kind of just haunted. I don't mm-hmm. know. There was yeah. There's just uh, wait. Can I ask you something? Yeah. To deviate a little bit, do you believe in ghosts? I'm you know I'm a pretty like I don't really believe in ghosts. I was thinking that on the way here, actually. Like, mm-hmm. I believe in kind of the suggestion of it. Um, I have some pretty kind of weird stories I'm not going to tell right now, though. That oh, my God. Kind of, uh, that Extras. Have effect, that have affected me kind of. Patreon. But I'm also, <laughs> cool. I don't, I'm not one to, like, disrespect <laughs> the dead or I don't, like, kind of, like, I'm very kind of, and as a superstition, but I just want to, like, to respect people's, um, you know, kind of beliefs but I'm so, I'm, I mean, the occult, when it comes to movies or music, you know, like death metal or black metal and mm-hmm. stuff like that, I, the imagery, uh, I was uh, like things like, um, you know, Satanism, not in the sense of like, I believe in it, but you know, that thing of like, you know, the b- b- Book of Satan or uh, Anton LaVey or whatever. Mm-hmm. I find all, occult, all that very, oh, I very love, interesting. I think yeah. that stuff is so interesting. It's, it, it's interesting in, uh, it's just a very powerful Visual, but so are any religious, you know, churches are, um, I mean, I'm not a religious person, but like old school churches are amazing to look at and to yeah. be in. Like yeah. it's the imagery, stained glass, like all of it is just very, very powerful. Mm-hmm. And I think like even songs that reference, not necessarily like Christian groups, but like songs that reference God in whatever way they think is always so powerful and moving because it has that behind it. And I always love, I mean, mm-hmm. I love songs that reference like God or 
the Lord, but not necessarily in the way of like I'm a, we're a Christian band and we're it just it, ha- it just happens to work into their song is always super powerful. Um, but I'm not really yeah I'm not a really uh, it's weird like I don't I don't know but I generally don't. Okay. But there's things that have kind of freaked me out. You know what I mean? I cannot wait to hear it. Not now, but yeah. I can't wait to yeah. hear them. It's tough. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 it, it's some tough stuff. But uh, it doesn't mean I don't let it freak me out. Like if we're mm-hmm. in a, pl- I'm not like brave. Like if we, hopefully we'll go somewhere and we'll do some of these like live or whatever. I'm not going to go there and be tough. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be scared of ghosts. Yeah, I'm scared of things that I don't think exist. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that doesn't. <laughs> that no, we're doesn't still sign- humans, and like we have irrational fears as many sure. as much yeah. as we have rational fears. You yeah, know? Um, I think it's part of being a human. I don't, I, I want to believe in ghosts really badly. Like I want it so bad, but I, I'm like one of those like over eager, like n- I'll never see a ghost or right. have anything. Cause you want it too bad. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I like, you know, it's like being on like a murder case, at a dur- you know, like a dirty duty and, yeah. and everyone's like, who, like nobody wants to be here, but you're like, I want to be here. I want to be here. Yeah, then you don't like, want to OJ. Yeah. yeah. They're like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You freak. That's with me and ghosts. But yeah. I do, I do think there's so many unexplained things. It's hard. I don't know what to make of that. You know, like I think in my head, yeah, I, I want to believe. I don't really. I'm like, where's the proof? But I'm eager to eager for the proof. But there's so many other people who have said stuff I, that nobody can explain. And pe- people that have said the same thing. But there's also mm-hmm. like a kind of a mob or like a a kind of like crowd mentality. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it's a lot of suggestion. I think there's a it lot of. It can't all suggestion. be like a carbon monoxide leak, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean. I don't know, like you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what really to make of that because I, I'm in love with the idea of it. Me too. I love it presented. I think it's, you know, because it comes from a thing where it's like, it always makes sense in some way. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I, you know, like aliens. Uh, I mean, dude, I'm sure there's other life forms. You know what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. I don't. A lot of a lot of people say they see aliens all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily on that on that tip but you know it's like there's probably other life forms out there I can believe that and, you know, yeah you know uh, someone explained ghosts to me really interestingly which we'll, we'll get back to the comedy store but I, <laughs> I think this is great um, I'm alone <laughs> everyone's like to wrap it up yeah uh, but the idea of ghosts being like an imprint um, mm. or like energetic imprint like I do believe like, ener- like transfer of energy and like kinetic energy sure yeah um, but seeing a ghost like ghosts are often where they died or like doing things that they do a lot or it's like almost the energy doing the motions after the person has left like a camp, like kind of like a campfire where you see the ash from the fire, but it's not there. Yeah, kind of interesting. I think no. I mean, there could be some kind of biochemical thing. You know what I mean? Because it's like, how do you? I don't know how that's measured. So mm-hmm. um, I think it's uh, I think it's definitely possible. And listen, if you've been to the comedy store, or if you've or just go seriously send us ghost stories. Like yeah. I want to hear all of them. I want to oh, yeah. read them on air. Yeah, I like fucking get off on that shit. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So if you, uh, you know what I mean? Like if so to kind of wrap up the comedy store to be inside of it, it does see, like if you woke up in a nightmare and it was a comedy store, you'd be like, oh yeah, this place is pretty because mm-hmm. it's very narrow. It's a lot of narrow hallways, a lot of brown and like black and white pictures on the wall. Um, I don't know how it's not the outside's been updated. I don't feel like the inside is like as no, super updated. It's not. I mean, it's but, all carpeted. If that tells you anything. But it's amazing that it's kind of kept. But I think it's trapped in. A lot of emotion. And I mm-hmm. believe like that could be like just it's just it's like in a pressure cooker of emotion. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that in itself could make you see things or feel things or hear things. So um, but yeah, if you have if you have any um, insight on the comedy store or just straight up ghost stories. Mm-hmm. Are you going to invite Rebecca? us to an open mic? Yeah, you, you, you got an open <laughs> mic you want us to go to. Uh, you can uh, email us uh, ghost ghost town pod at gmail dot com or our socials, uh, which is all ghost town pod mm-hmm. and we would love to uh we'd love to we'd love to hear from you absolutely any other tidbits comedy store tidbits you want to share any you know it's personal it's, uh, how's your own personal experience being there i'm i'm always in awe like i'm just in yeah. awe of like it's it's a it's a to me it's a historic landmark even though mm-hmm. it's, i don't think it's classified as one so for me in, in itself it's just like you know uh, dave Chappelle's last special was in the belly room yeah it's Belly like, room I, is the the smallest room in the comedy smallest. store. Now I'm kind of like pieced up this article that the Belly Room mm-hmm. 
Now, is it the belly room? Does it have anything to do with the abortion clinic? You know, I'm theorizing. I don't know. Let us know if Let you have any know. insight. Yeah, if you have any Mitzi's insight. Mitzi's ghost, yeah. come at us. Yeah, or don't come at us. I'm, I'm kind of scared. Come at no. me. Yeah, just, no, just she, That would not be the ghost that I would want to yeah. encounter, I think. That'd be a little be? intense. What do you want to be? Someone hot. Oh. Hot ghost? Yeah, like a James Dean. He's busy. He's not. Oh, he's already, already for you. Yes, Ouija board. You got Ouija board no. with some divining rods. No. Okay. Sorry. 